All right, sorry, let's cut to the chase here. I have just been thinking about the original reasons I ever made, um, this persona and channel and vlogs and blogs and blah, blah, blah. Why I ever thought anyone would give a damn about hearing what I had to say. It's not that I didn't think people cared about me, that my problems were big and important, and oh god, I hate looking at my old videos and reading my old journals. Oh my god, I'm annoying and insufferable. But, I made the, made them, made, I didn't make them for other people, but I posted them, and I shared them, so that other people weren't alone. Or they could say, wow, this person's way worse than I am, they're more annoying, I don't got nut. they ain't got nothing on me, I'm not as much of a little shit as this person is. Not that that was my mentality at the time. But I put them out there so that people... People could feel not alone. That was the point of Maiden Fay, or Royal Fay, or Little King Fay. That's that was always my point. Was a community, and I guess I used Emily Autumn as a good way to find that community because. No, I'm not going to say she's the best advocate for us. Oh no, I'm sorry. As much as I love Emily Autumn, she's not, you know, our patron. <laughs> but there were a lot of people in the fan base who, like myself, found help or found console or something from her in some sort of way that was helpful. That we were able to realize we weren't alone in our feelings and what we were, what we are, who we are. And that's one of the things that I really liked, was even if she wasn't right, or even if her case wasn't the same as everyone else's, even if she over-glorifies or over dramatizes her situations or illness, it still helped people in some sort of aspect. I used to feel like I wasn't valid. I used to feel invalid about my depression. I saw that I wasn't suicidal and I therefore was not allowed to be depressed. I didn't hate my body as much as my sisters to make myself vomit or bulimic or anorexic. I didn't hate life enough or feel terribly enough in my life that I wanted to die and I had to justify to myself seeing a psychiatrist I had to convince myself before I could convince anyone else that seeing a psychiatrist was the right thing to do even though I had been seeing a therapist for nearly if not over six years at that point I still didn't see myself as justified but I do now and I think everyone else should feel that way too. I'm not saying everyone should go on medication. God, no. And I'm not saying it was easy for me to get medication either. I mean, it probably helped that I had a history of mental health in my family. But I had to do MRIs and tests and trials. And I, it bothers me when I hear people say, oh, psychiatrists give out antidepressants like candy. I'm like, okay, then you have a bad psychiatrist. I liked my psychiatrist because she was very involved and very quick to want to change things if something went wrong. So if you have psychiatrists like that, don't see them. Don't go for the quick easy because that's not exactly what's going to be the best thing. That something's wrong with that psychiatrist if they're just, you know, giving pills out like candy because it doesn't work that way. I'm not saying you should have to work to get better, but sometimes that work can be in there. But no, I wanted to talk about, ooh, I hate looking at my old vlogs. I've been looking back at some of them, and I can't believe I, like, I, I know I subconsciously do it nowadays. But I will automatically sometimes switch into accents. And I'm just like, oh, are you serious? I'm going to piss off a bunch of people. <laughs> I posted this. And I had my behind the scene thing, and I can't believe I posted that video with the faces of people. Mmm. Without editing them out in any way. 
Uh, huh, huh. I don't think my sister would ever be happy if she saw that I did that. Look, uh, I don't want to talk about even reading my blogs. Oh my god, my journals. I just want to slap myself. But I was young. I was foolish. I was stupid. I was a kid. Still am. Still stupid, foolish kid. I mean, hey, I've got no dependency, independency right now. I live with a family of eight, a household of eight. I don't drive. I don't have a job currently. I've had jobs. I currently don't have one. I'm going to college. I haven't graduated yet. I've been in college for nearly six years. There was a break in between, so... So I've only done four years of college. This is, I'm completing my fourth year of college, but I still have another year and a half left. Because if things go according to plan, which I don't know with me anymore, I should be able to graduate as of the end of fall 2020. Oh, no, it's 2019. Fall 2019. Sorry. If I don't screw things up for myself over and over and over again. Like I constantly have been. I had three classes a semester and I still just barely failed. One. And I'm so done with this pattern with myself. I thought I'd be over it this semester and apparently I wasn't skipping class, not doing papers, not... And I was just barely two. So I'm signed up to this class again, waitlist this time, because I didn't know for sure what my grade was until recently. And so when I wanted to sign up with the exact same teacher, exact same class, because I, I knew where I failed, and I knew if I tried again, I could do it. I want to better myself, I really do. The point of my things isn't just about me. It's to let others know we're not alone. We've got each other in some way. You're not invalid in the way you're feeling. You're not the only one who feels this way. I'll talk about really nitty gritty personal things if people need me to. Just so you know you're not alone. There's nothing wrong with you. Or maybe there's something wrong with you, but it could help for us. There is other ways. There are other things and you're not trapped. There's another tomorrow, there's another day. Hell, isn't that not what my tattoo's about? There's another fucking day. And I want you guys to know that I'm here for you. I'll hug you through the screen if I have to, just so you know you're not alone. I'm not alone. I know you guys are out there, and I know, I know you need to know someone's out there. And maybe that was the appeal from the autumn. That was her persona. She was the bipolar bitch. And that's not me saying she's a bitch. I'm just saying that was her persona. Or is... was. And so... Let's march on, little ratties. <laughs> let's be healthy about it, though. I've seen unhealthy and toxic things in... Well, not just this fan base, but every fan base. But it's just... I want to bring a healthy, positive well-being in here. If you want to talk about suicide, I'll talk to you about suicide, but I will not encourage you. I won't encourage bulimia or anorexia. I won't encourage wanting to die. Because I do feel those things too. But I'm not going to say it's okay that I do. There's hope. There's reason to go. And there's cute, adorable kittens. If that's not enough reason to live, I don't know what is. So let's fucking march on. Let's make 2019 a fucking great year. We're not going to let it kick us down. We're not going to sit and we're not going to take fucking beating. We're going to stand up together. And we're going to make it through together. Let's do this. Let's fucking win 2019. Let's live and win this game of life. Let's win this race. The human race. And enjoy cat butts. I love you guys. I don't know who you are, and that's really creepy. Just be like, I love you, but I love you. Someone out there loves you. Even if it's a complete crazy stranger. This deranged person loves you very much. 
So let's go and kick ass.